In this session, Aaron will provide an update on the Open Group Preliminary Standard for Open Business Architecture that I mentioned earlier on, OBA. So you hear a bit more, to, or more about it now um, from Aaron. So please give uh, Aaron Rostrom a big, big, warm Open Group welcome. You know, I really appreciate uh, what Jeff was talking about and, and can, can relate. I've been doing uh, architecture, I call myself an architecture practitioner for 25 years, let's say. The eight years before that, I was a, an organizational change agent uh, for one of the congressional agencies and designing and uh, developing and implementing human system changes, mainly around agency or department level uh, transformations. And it's true that at the end of the day, it's all about culture. And when I teach uh, architects, new architects and experienced architects about enterprise architecture, I always tell them that you spend 60% of your time being a communicator, 20% of your time actually doing your analysis, and 20% of putting models together and stuff, stuff like that. And so I can really re relate to what, what Jeff says. And I always tell architects, don't forget to look left and right peripherally, because that's the stuff culturally that's not being said that's as, as, as important as what's being said. And so for me, I, I can really re relate to what uh, Je Jeff is uh, saying. And, and as an enterprise architect, as a practitioner, I'm always going back to my roots, those first eight to 10 years of my career, going back to and looking at, at organizational change and culture change or organizational uh, analysis types of stuff and applying that in a technology-oriented capacity. So I can, can really appreciate that. As Steve said at the beginning, you know, I'm really excited about the, the renewed or sort of the, the, the forward movement we're making around business architecture uh, within the open group. I think, uh, like Jeff has says and like Steve said, it, it is, and others have, are saying, it is an area of opportunity for, for architects I spend a lot of time training our senior business analysts to think about things in an architecture way to give them a new way of looking at problem solving for, for their clients. And so with that, the Open Business Architecture Initiative at the Open Group is really about providing some guidance to companies for establishing a business architecture practice. And so what I'd like, I'd like to do is to give, kind of re review, give, give you sort of an update on, on that status. So first of all, we'll update regarding the, the recent activities and, and work pertaining to the emerging, and I'll be better if I'm out here, emerging um, uh, um, you know, work around business architecture. Kind of review uh, the structure of the OBA emerging standards. So OBA stands for Open Business Architecture Standard. And then provide an update regarding one of the OBA preliminary standards, i.e. part one of the standard. So organizations today are really, you know, this whole digital transformation thing and now the internet of things and all, there, there are a number of pressures from the outside and internal pressures to uh, perform better and to, to behave differently and to engage with the clients better and to engage with the uh, customers better. There are internal pressures and external pressures. So this is the contemporary organization. So the reaction is, is to, to mitigate this situation of facing that many organizations are embarking or intend to embark on a strategic you know, transformation, organizational transformation effort. Because they know that they need to do something different. So companies that are looking at doing digital transformation, for example, they know that in many, almost all of them have to do things dramatically different if they want to be successful in that, that area. Coming back to what I said before, for me, uh, you know, digital transformation is a human endeavor. It's not a technology endeavor. And I, when I work with our management consulting group within Capgemini, I'm always reminding them, don't look at this from a technology perspective, look at this from a, a human perspective and then technology perspective. So as an architect, what, you know, how can I help? So what's needed is an approach to describe and then drive understanding of the required transformation. So organizations decide that they want to go through an enterprise organizational transformation or business unit tra transformation. I need to make sure that everyone understands up and side, you know, up, up and down and sideways, left to right, what that actually trans translates to. So the Open Business Architecture Initiative is trying to, to provide just that guidance. So it's, it's, you know, we're developing a, a new standard to provide the guidance for new and existing business architecture practices. So companies are, as Jeff is saying, you know, initiating these business architecture efforts to try to, to bring some 
uh, you know, some progress, some additional um, you know, movement forward in, in this area. So the, the standard is, is intended to give some guidance around the business architecture practice. And it's really, the current f uh, standard focuses on transformations at the enterprise uh, or organizational level. So what does a business architect need to do um, to, to help um, make sure that these enterprise and organizational transformations are successful? And it defines um, an approach to, to, to ensure a clear understanding of the vision uh, across all stakeholders. Just as Jeff is saying, as a practitioner, I can tell you, it's really true. Everyone, you know, the, the uh, strategy diffusion sort of path, uh, that line he gave, that, that is really true. That, that definitely happens. So the idea is to come up with a set of mechanisms that will uh, ensure and assure that as a stakeholder reads about the strategy and what that means, that they, everyone hears it the, the same way. At least they see and hear this, or hear the, the, the same words. So the Emerging Center has three parts. Part one is really focused on, let's make sure that people understand the, the, the strategy, what the, vision, what the transformation is, is intended to do. Part two will then describe the context which the business architecture uh, practice is applied. And then part three is, will include specific techniques and guidelines that will en enable the practice. So part one is the only, is the only piece that's a preliminary standard uh, today, and it's really around making sure that the business architect can articulate what, what the enterprise organization transformation is about to make sure that all stakeholders uh, get it and think about it in a very common way. Not that they'll think about it exactly the same way, because they'll have their own you know, their organizational personal biases, but, but at least they, they, they have a chance to hear it the same way. And our focus today is on part one. So part one is, uh, is you know, one of three, the first of three parts. Uh, it has a, uh, a you know, table of contents that looks like this. So it's, it's gonna go through uh, typical type of things uh, around uh, the, the standard, around business architecture, present a, a, a paradigm for looking at what in business architecture is, and to propose a way of actually uh, pulling off a business architecture practice through uh, a, a particular business architecture framework idea. And so the, the standard is really trying to address three prevailing transformation challenges. One is consistent communication, which is really important if you're trying to uh, fulfill a transformation initiative and, and the goals and objectives of that and the, and the impact of that. Alignment uh, and, and governance. Let's make sure that we have alignment across all stakeholders and that there's a, a govern, governance process to make sure that, that everyone can, has a chance to iterate and influence the transformation and then to address systemic uh, you know, na na nature. And so there are mechanisms that the standard is articulating to help us with all of this. So first of all, it's a common language. It gives the business architects a way to speak amongst themselves as well as with the business folks on how to uh, re represent what the, the business architecture needs are. There's vertical and horizontal or cross-domain traceability. So whether I'm talking to a stakeholder that, that is in different departments or at different levels of the organization, that there's, that there's traceability in terms of the value or the impact that that can have or the implication that this new transformation will have upon them. It's a holistic view, so looking at things broadly and comprehensively so that whatever stakeholder I happen to be, I can see where, where my, my piece is going to be impacted and where the opportunities lie and kind of integration of the kind of modeling and narrative around the tra transformation itself. And then a transformation process or method uh, in, in integration. So the business architecture practice needs to get integrated into the transformation uh, planning and management exercise so they can influence what is actually going to take place and, and monitor and influence what is, is taking place. And then the, the, last, the last piece, the business architecture practice features. So this is another sort of piece of the standard where we, we make recommendations around what we think the business architecture um, you know, practice should look like or feel like. Uh, so it captures and interprets uh, business strategy, it integrates and aligns strategy and structure and operations, assess implications and sets direction. So th as, a, as a practice, those are the types of things that at the moment we believe are uh, things that that practice should consider doing. The other parts of the standard will deal with uh, design, develop, and implementation perspectives of the business architecture practice. So the, the standard provides guidance for business architecture, as, as I've been saying. 
Um, and mainly to facilitate, cro facilitate cross-stakeholder and stakeholder group understanding of the vision for the transformation, the strategy, the approach, the mechanisms to actually help us realize the transformation, and then what are the implications from an operations perspective or from a structure perspective as a result of the transformation. And this is all aimed at making sure that all the stakeholders, regardless of where they sit in the organization, you know, understand you know, and the, the description of the transformation uh, and the potential implications. And the standard aims to do this through and provides a mechanism for a, of a holistic view to make sure that companies uh, and that their organizations can, can, can do that. So let's look at this holistic view. The holistic view is comprised of three domains, uh, strategy, structure, and operational. The strategy piece is really a, a, uh, intended to make, make sure that we articulate all the elements that are a part of the uh, strategy uh, together, you know, the insights and the, and the, the in, and priorities and the value uh, mechanisms that we want to have an uh, impact uh, around the, the strategy. Structure says, you know, it refers to those elements that, that describe how the strategy is going to actually be pulled off. What's, what's required from a structure perspective to actually pull this off? You know, organizationally, uh, process-wise, operational, what are, you know, structurally, what needs to be uh, changed? Uh, and what, what are the, the, the implications or the focus of the operational uh, sort of do, um, domain? So ways that the business architect can articulate and, and to describe and visualize what those implications are uh, and how to mitigate those or how to uh, address those. So that, that's the holistic view at, at, a, at a high level. There are a set of artifacts that are, are you know, deliverables, output, uh, that are uh, um, proposed or recommended as part of the standard to a, a potential new or existing business architecture practice. And they're, they're aligned to the, the different three domains. So let's look at the strategy. So one is around strategic intent. So give the um, business architects a set of tools that they can use, selectively use, so this isn't a prescription. Think of this as a lot like TOGAP for those of you who know, who know TOGAP. It's a framework in which I cherry pick the things I need to use for what I'm trying to do. It's the same idea here. There are a set of artifacts that we think are important and they're, that they're recommended. But as a business architect, I may choose to only uh, do just a few of them or the ones that, that are really impactful. So it's strategic intent is one of those. Let's make sure that people are clearly understand and I can describe what the strategic intent is. External vision. So, what are the impacts, and what are the, uh, what's the mission, or sort of the vision for from an external perspective? What are the priorities? What are the objectives from an external perspective? And then stra strategic priorities. So, that these uh, these are sort of the three areas of artifacts that support the strategy or uh, domain, or allow the business architect to bring to, to fruition the uh, you know, strategy uh, aspect of the transformation. And for in structure domain, it's, it's a business structure. So what are the structural elements from a capabilities perspective, uh, for, for example? Uh, what are the things that uh, are going, going to allow the, the strategy to come to, uh, you know, to, to, come to be, be realized? And operational, is there operational context? I mean, operational is really about implications. Implications from an organizational perspective, from a process perspective, from a variety of, of perspectives. And so there is a specific set of artifacts that are recommended for the business architecture practice to leverage while they're trying to address the operational aspects of the tra transformation. And so the idea is that with those artifacts being created and being uh, you know, proposed, we, th we believe that there's a business architecture practice that would be the mechanism to create and maintain those through the life cycle of the transformation. So whether it's an enterprise transformation or an organizational transformation or a process or department transformation, the idea is that this business architecture practice would be uh, the team that would uh, be you know, on the hook to, to uh, pull, pull this off. So let's, let's look at the business architecture practice. So within the standard, we actually recommend uh, a, select, uh, a, a specific set of requirements for the business architecture practice. So if I'm a, an executive or if I'm an enterprise architect and I think that the business architect uh, you know, thing is important, then what are the requirements that I need to think about? So that, that's the intent of this portion of the standard, to, to articulate for the, uh, the person who's looking uh, or investigating or thinking about putting together a business architecture practice or has one that they might want to improve. Uh, so one requirement is apply a common uh, language. 
So this is really to drive consistent communication across all the stakeholders, with other architects, with business stakeholders, with IT stakeholders, et cetera. Another one is make sure you have mechanisms to give you the ability to articulate vertically traceability. So traceability from a, a strategy piece all the way down to the operations piece. So these might be things like vision or strategic intent or competence or capability or resources. So there is a specific um, you know, uh, point in time that I think about those things and I actually articulate and describe them as they relate to the transformation. Uh, especially as, as they are related to the, uh, as a result of the implications of the strategy of, of the transformation. Also have you know, mechanisms that you can articulate, horizontally speaking, traceability. So this is make sure that stakeholders that work in, you know, might typically be working in silos in, in the uh, functions or operational areas, but because of this transformation, it spans those different departments that they might be in. Let's make sure that they understand the relationship uh, across those different departments and, and, and organizations. So really from a cross-business uh, do, do, domain perspective. And I spend a lot of time when I teach uh, folks about uh, whether it's TOGAF or other enterprise architecture frameworks, I spend a lot of time talking about these things called views. And a holistic view is, is for the standard, this thing that provides uh, a view um, broadly, um, it makes sure that everything is covered. And I'll, in, a, a couple, in a few seconds, I'll, I'll talk about what, what those three specific view areas are. But I teach architects, you'll, you may, especially when you're doing the logical design of the, of the business, you might actually create 30, 40 different views and use about 12 or 15 because those are the ones that end up being impactful. So what we're doing here is we're, rec we're rec recommending a specific set of views that the business architect can pull from to communicate what he or she thinks that they need to communicate to their stakeholders. So again, that, that we, and we think that this holistic view is an important piece to this. And then uh, lastly, as a requirement, implement transformation process integration with the approach to ensure right artifacts applied at the right time. So if the company has a defined transformation process, a typical um, you know, set, sequence of things that the transformations go through, let's make sure that the business, architect, or business architecture pieces are, the, are integrated into that. Or if the company doesn't have, which often can be the case, they don't have a formal um, you know, tr uh, transformation um, you know, method or framework in place, let's make sure that we influence what gets a part of that as, as the, uh, and recommend that, they, that the company does that. So that, that's, that's the idea behind these, these, these requirements. So this set of requirements um, will, uh, is intended to give guidance to organizations that are investigating, uh, you know, putting in place a business architecture practice. So think of them like, like, like that. And that, as is typical with standards, these will evolve over time, but this is the, the current set with the preliminary standard. So one of the things that the standard recommends is, is let's approach things in a very systematic way through a structured process. And the recommendation is to have a three-step you know, structured process to, to fulfill what we think are the requirements of the business architecture practice. So, and this is really to make sure that the transformation, the value to the business resulting from the transformation comes to fruition, like it happens. And that, that the business and, and even the IT uh, sides of the, of the house each ha has some value uh, opportunity coming from the enterprise or organization transformation, for example. So the first one is capture ins capturing insights. So this, this step is really about, let's look at the market so let's, let's see what's going on in the market. Let's look at what's happening across the, the, the different marketing departments if we, and the product and services that the, companies, uh, that the company sells. Let's analyze the market. Let's understand implications. So what are the implications that, uh, that are, are there as, as part of the um, you know, these transformation and vision transformation? The second piece is the alignment and governance. So this, I mean, this is about uh, stakeholder alignment, alignment and then having a formal way that, that the align, that the Describe the transformation bits from a business architecture perspective can be uh, iterated to address the, the, the needs of the stakeholder and stakeholder groups. So the holistic view of alignment, so the holistic view mechanism is just a piece to that. And the common language for, for governance. So if I'm going to come and propose a, you know, a change to a transformation or to, to evolve a particular part of the transformation, let's make sure we have a, a, way, a, you know, a consistent way that, that the stakeholders know how to uh, present that. And the third piece is communication, uh, uh, direction, and enabling means. So this is, once we have, uh, once we understand what the transformation is about, 
And once we have stakeholder alignment and governance, now we want to go out and, and actually communicate this uh, broadly and actually implement uh, it as part of the transformation. So let's apply the business strategy to, it might be to an organization, it might be to, to the enterprise. And let's communicate before we actually pull the trigger what, 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 what's actually going to happen and why that, that's happening. And then let's choose some enabling means. So enabling means could be a wide variety of things. There might be some specific uh, artifacts that, that we're proposing. It might be something specific. It might be mechanisms going on in the, the organization um, that might be a, a meaningful way to share and communicate what's actually coming. And the, this process um, is intended to, to generate a variety of views or, or output. So the, the idea is we have a, a, a systematic kind of a rigor to the, the process that we recommend as part of the standard. And coming out of each one of these pieces will be a, a kind of a wide variety, or I'd say a variety of artifacts or views. And the views are all about, make, let's make sure that our description, people can understand it. So you have a variety of views around that. So we can communicate it, so we can share it, and then that we can actually track the, uh, the progress to the strategic goals. The structured uh, process should have the f f uh, certain properties. So as part of the standard, you know, we recommend that, that there is a, 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 a structured process. Well, that process should have some specific uh, you know, properties or characteristics or attributes. And one is the holistic view, which we've talked about already, but it's, it's, it's the complete set of descriptions of business strategy, structure, and implications. So that's, it's a holistic view from, from that, that perspective. Way of fields. So the way of uh, fields describe the, the different aspect uh, areas of a business architecture practice. And I'll say a little bit more about the way of, but the, think of the way of doing something, uh, way of, uh, is, is a specific application of how to uh, describe the, uh, how the business architecture practice would work. And then common language, sort of a set of defined concepts uh, that are essential to the business architecture um, practice. So standard set of process, you know, standard structured process that has these particular properties. So our recommendation is as a structured process is going through its thing, doing its thing, that there are things falling out of it that, that uh, satisfy these uh, properties is, is the way to think about this. Now TOGAF uh, is one of the, is another one of the critical uh, open group standards and we know that, we believe that the business architecture standard, uh, the OBA standard, can work in conjunction with the TOGAF standard, and especially in, in three phases. And so the preliminary phase, uh, phase A, the architecture visioning, and phase B, which is the uh, business architecture. And so there are many reasons why we think that uh, this sort of um, collaboration, so to speak, or this sort of integrativeness uh, is, is good. So one is uh, the enterprise continuum uh, provides a view of how an industry architecture needs to evolve. And that, so we need to make sure that the business architecture uh, evolves uh, in, in alignment with that. The output of the OBA basically builds on, enhances the preliminary phase. So preliminary phase is all about why are we doing uh, this uh, architecture project? What are we trying to accomplish? What are the, any assumptions that might be related to that? What are some constraints? So the good piece of information that's going to drive that understanding would come from the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the structured process for the open business architecture group. And then the OBA standard provides a general, uh, a more explicit and structured way to align and integrate uh, strategy, structure, and, and operations. So, um, and then the lastly is that the standard, um, so the OBA standard applies um, and from a content perspective, extensions to the, the TOGAF 9 uh, content meta model. And so through, this, through the business architecture extensions idea uh, mechanism, that that's, that's where these uh, additional um, you know, common language uh, and artifacts would get re re represented. So the business architect role engaged in all phases of transformation ensures consistent communication. So just as Jeff was saying, and as, as a practitioner I see all the time as being important, communication is really uh, a, a key part of the enterprise architect, as, and especially for the business architect. So by having the business architect involved with the entire transformation uh, cycle or life cycle, we can make sure that, these, that all the stakeholders and impacted uh, roles will understand what, what's, what's coming and, and what the impact of that's going to be. 
So there are a number of trends happening in, in, the, uh, in the organizations these days. There are uh, you know, internal and external uh, pressures uh, uh, around, you know, all over the place. And, uh, and oftentimes companies are looking at, okay, maybe we need to think about doing the, our business, uh, in the, the last example I think that Jeff gave, we need to think about doing our business a little differently. Maybe take the same things we do today, but maybe we need to do things uh, di differently. So, i.e., this idea of a new business model. There isn't any better opportunity to leverage a business architecture practice or business architect than in this situation, uh, for which the structured approach will help describe the business architecture elements that's required for the new business model. So, and with that in mind, the, the challenge today is to, is to capture and, and communicate a holistic view Again, from a strategy and structure and operations uh, perspective, so that, that, that holistic view, across all stakeholder groups, that shows where the boundaries of the transformation lie, uh, is, is easy to communicate. So the mechanisms uh, that, that we are proposing uh, uh, have that as a, you know, a, a characteristic. They should be easy uh, to, to apply. And that it can conveys a transformation vision to make sure that what gets implemented will satisfy the enterprise organizational tra transformation. And increasingly, uh, companies are turning to a, the business architecture practice to help them to systematically deal with the disruptive change. And so, um, and so hence the, the need for the, you know, the timely need of, of, of this standard to, to provide some guidance to companies that, that, that are doing that. And so we believe that the, you know, the business architecture practice isn't just one thing. It's, it's not one, uh, one size fits all type sort of thing. The, the project might, might vary widely. So the, uh, the project that or the initiative, a business architecture practice might be involved in could be something like, you know, it might be a, a, you know, a whole uh, business strategy uh, transformation. So it might move from understanding uh, the business and business strategy uh, to the implications of, uh, for operations be one or, or, or yeah, either of those or, or, or both of them. Might be for a large business transformation or it might be for a small change initiative. Or it might be kind of an initiative idea. So th this kind of funky idea for a business uh, initiative, it might be helped to try to bring that to fruition or it might be deploying a target structure uh, in, in, in operations. So, so the, the, from a practice perspective, the message is, the projects won't all look alike. The initiatives you get involved in won't, the work that you do won't all be the same type of work. You need to make sure you have some flexibility in, in how you operate and how you uh, assign and, and uh, delegate roles to that. And the OBA standard is intended to help business architects deal continuously with change and the implications cross domain in structures and operations. So, the OBA describes ways to model vertical and horizontal traceability. So traceability has been a, an ongoing uh, you know, concern in the architecture community for a, a long time. And in TOGAF and other uh, enterprise architecture frameworks, we give simple mechanisms, typically ma ma matrices on how to do that. So for the uh, OBA standard, we actually provide some enhanced ways of doing vertical and horizontal uh, traceability. And why this is important is that the vertical tra traceability ensures transparency, enables alignment and governance. So looking you know, top to bottom, where, wherever um, I sit in the organization as a stakeholder, I have visibility to what the transformation is uh, you know, being described to do. And I can um, you know, you know, feel or I can, uh, it can be described to what the implications might be. Horizontal traceability. It's critical for understanding this sort of cross-domain dependencies and, and, and investments. So a transformation, uh, an enterprise transformation often has different types of implications and depending on which business area I'm in. And so the idea of the business architect is to be able to describe those impacts or implications uh, across the board horizontally. So now we have understanding across the board, across the departments or organizations of the impact of the enterprise transformation. So the key elements of the OBA standard uh, to assist a business architect to bring value to transformations is what this is, uh, is another part of the uh, standard. And so within the standard, we identify what these key elements are. So one is a, a holistic view of all aspects, a strategic needs for transformation. So what is the strategic need for the transformation? 
what's a business structure cross domain? So the transformation, uh, what's the impact and what does the structure cross from a business perspective cross domain? So integrated operations, so what is the uh, integrated impact of the transformation across operations and all levels of, of, of operations? Enhanced horizontal, enhanced uh, vertical traceability, and then the technology strategy. And that last piece is, is important because today, business transformation or business change, whatever, whenever uh, one, of our, one of my clients talks to me as a business executive, they want to make some change, you know, 99% of the time, it's being driven or facilitated by technology. So if I have a business architecture sort of uh, defined from a, for the transformation, chances are there will be a technology strategy that needs to be articulated as well, which requires some collaboration across different architecture uh, communities. Uh, so that, that at least initially, there's an initial view of what these uh, technology strategy impact uh, and implications are. So the five ways framework is used to, um, is to help to describe the standardized practice. So part of the standard is to, dis to describe a, that what a business architecture practice would be and to propose a specific way of actually pulling that off. And so the five ways framework is the mechanism that, that's included in, in the standard. So the five ways include a way of thinking, way of modeling, way of organizing, way of supporting, way of working. And so this specific um, technique allows, um, you know, it, it provides sort of, a, as I'm trying to build the practice, these five areas give me, a, a, um, you know, inform me how to think about the practice itself. So way of thinking is all about uh, the mindset and, why, and how we're going to approach this. And it resolves challenges of continuous change. So for these you know, today the, these, these transformation initiatives aren't, are becoming less and less long-lived. They're short cycle transformations that we need, will need to do routinely. So we need to think about these uh, from a business architecture perspective and to uh, embed flexibility uh, within the d defined structure. A way of modeling, so it assures alignment and integration of uh, uh, strategy, structure, and, and operations. So a specific way of modeling what's, uh, what's required and what the implications are, what the impacts are. So a specific set of artifacts that uh, we, um, we're recommending for the uh, business architecture practice. Way of organizing, so assures the business architecture acts at the right time. So from a engagement management perspective or from a, a consultative in, um, perspective, uh, the business architect engaging with the business leader or the IT leader. So a, a specific way of organizing our thoughts and it, uh, a way of supporting basically gives us a, a way of supporting the, the practice. So these might be a, a common language or, or uh, techniques or artifacts that, that we might, um, that we're proposing to support the business and enable the business architecture practice. And lastly is the way of working, which assures leadership and uh, stakeholder com communication. So as I'm building or as I'm describing the, the required transformation, I'm doing that in a way that I can address each of the stakeholders wherever they sit left to right or sit top to bottom in the, in the organization. And then lastly um, is uh, three so, um, recommended views. So in the OBA standard, we, we articulate uh, three particular views which we think are important. Think of these views not as a single illustration, but as a collection of uh, words uh, and uh, uh, illustrations, let, let's say. So one is the strategy view, the second one is the structure view, and the last one is the operational context view. So the idea is that these are three sp uh, recommended views to, that drive a, that have a different context, so they're actually representing the transformation from a different perspective. Uh, and that they are doing, um, they're implementing uh, the recommendations that we talked about before. So they give us a way to do vertical trace, to represent and to model and to describe vertical traceability. They're actually giving us the mechanism to do horizontal uh, traceability. Uh, a dependency network diagram is, is one of the specific thing that's recommended. So now we have the, understand the, the dependencies across the life cycle of the transformation that we specifically articulate that. 
Uh, and then, then the common language is, is another uh, you know, piece to that where we provide a, a proposed set of uh, mechanisms that are part of each one of the views and that those things are what we think the business architect should um, minimally consider doing. Business architect may choose to add additional um, you know, things to, to what they're articulating, but, that, but from a standards perspective, these are, there's a specific set that, that we're recommending. So in summary, uh, the open business architecture standard is uh, intended to describe an approach for a business architecture practice and to drive enterprise and organization transformation. Secondly, part one of the standard has reached the preliminary standards stage uh, of the open uh, group uh, governance, uh, you know, like standards governance cycle. And parts two and three, uh, still to come, are, will address the design, develop, and implementation phases of the business architecture practice. And um, that's a, there's a particular f uh, figure in the standard where that, that is uh, described, uh, along with details around the artifacts. So what mechanisms and, what, and some um, examples of what those mechanisms uh, would look like or th that should look like uh, from, from a standards uh, perspective. As with any open group standard initiative, it's not any one person, it's a variety of people that, that contribute and a variety of companies that, that contribute to the evolution of this, this standard. And this, uh, the business architecture, the open business architecture standard is no different, and this is representative of the uh, different uh, you know, individuals and companies that are contributing uh, greatly to, to, to this. And with that, I um, say thank you. Thank you, Aaron. We're, we're, if you'd like to take a seat, sure. please. We'll, uh, we'll have a few quick questions because we are uh, running uh, into the break, but um, it's generated quite a few questions, so maybe the ones, okay. the ones we don't get to, maybe we can uh, cover some other way, yeah. maybe uh, uh, afterwards. But um, one that I thought would come up, um, what's, how, how is OBA positioned relative to the BizBoc, the Business Architecture Book of Knowledge from the Business Architecture Guild, and how would that be communicated? The second part's probably not a <laughs> question for you, it's more one for us, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but how, it, how does it so, relate to, to yeah, the so BizBoc? Um, so I, I know the BizBoc uh, and standard to, or you know, stuff uh, fairly well, and there isn't any specific um, you know, integrated sort of uh, perspective at this point. However, uh, business capabilities analysis is, we believe, a key part of the structure aspects of the standard. So the BizBoc mechanisms might be a, a useful tool to consider using for, for that. So I might have, we might have defined in, in the standard a, a recommended business capability analysis piece. But as a practitioner, I may choose to use the BizBoc because that aligns to either the, the, the organization, what the organization's already decided, or I may choose to use that for uh, other reasons. Okay, thank you. Um, question on analyzing markets. Um, uh, it says the time required and the specialization for, for this industry and disruptions can be daunting for an architect. Um, what uh, is the document, the OBA, does it separate the process and framework from guidance? And the second part is, is, is the guidance and what is the guidance and level of detail that the standard recommends for this portion of work? Yeah, so I, I was, uh, so the, first of all, we do, we do separate content from formats, so, so to speak, mm -hmm. so that, that, that type of idea. Um, and at, at the moment, uh, you know, the, the artifacts are still evolving. So, so you'll see as a pre preliminary st um, standard, there's a, 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 an, there's a set of uh, artifacts which are, have been identified, and there are examples of some of them. And th this area in particular, um, I think there isn't a lot of uh, specific or specificity uh, right, right now. Okay. So that's that, probably not the answer you're hoping for, but that's, that's the, the that's current the, state. Okay. Um, design thinking is also a popular way to drive business change. How do you see the relationship between design thinking and OBA or their approaches? Really good, good, good question. And there are other like mechanisms, collaborative mechanisms uh, out, out there today. So as a practitioner, I may choose to use uh, a variety of ways to collaborate and engage with the, the business. 
or with business and IT around a particular business uh, topic. Uh, design thinking is certainly one of the you know, popular ways to, to, to do that to, to today. And so, so I would, well, might engage the design thinking as a mechanism and trying to weed out from that process the things that I need as a business architect to, to, uh, you know, to create or to maintain the artifacts that I, that I decided I need to create. So it's, 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 it's a complementary uh, thing, and I may choose to rely on that technique to get to an understanding of what the business is needing to, to do. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, another question I predicted might come up, but how does uh, OBA see business architects as part of the EA group or as a separate discipline? Oh, man. We've, we've, we've never talked about that before. So. <laughs> You know, that, that topic comes up uh, all the time. And, um, and I don't, at, at the moment, I don't think we have any specific uh, guidance around that. We talk about the ways that um, we see it happening with across the organizations, uh, across the open group member organizations, as well as many of us that, that, that have clients. And there isn't any single trend. As Jeff described earlier, typically they, they might be in an reporting up to a CIO organization, uh, but more and more they're reporting to the, on the business, more and more they're reporting to the business side, and at the one example Jeff gave to the CFO, which I think is unusual, but that's very interesting. Um, but I think the, uh, but the, the, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I think on that, on that point, I'll say a bit more later on, but we have a, uh, a TOGAF user group on Wednesday morning, and the uh, the debate there is where does uh, business architecture fit inside an organisation? Yeah, very, um, very so nice. Looking forward to that one. Lastly, um, slide 14, which I'm guessing from the rest of the question is the one that showed the TOGAF ADM um, and and how this relates. It suggests a change to the preliminary um, phase, phase A and phase B. Does it replace B or enhance B? Yeah, so the current thing is it's, it's an extension, it's an enhancement of uh, phase A and phase B. It's, a, it's potentially, uh, it's also an enhancement of, of the preliminary. So when I do the pre preliminary work today, um, I'm bringing to the, to the situation my own set of tools and mechanism and way of thinking about it as an enterprise architect. Uh, now I'll have a, uh, a standard that I can call upon and that I, if I engage other people in that process, whether on the client side or uh, another consulting company, whatever, um, I can, you know, that standard is just like TOGAF has, will evolve and, and will have you know, consistency across what's, what's being uh, around the, the thinking and the way of articulating and describing. Okay, great. We, we'll, we'll leave it there and uh, let people go get coffee, but uh, thank you very much, Alan yeah, thank, you, thank you, everybody.